go. I spent about three hours in her office and we spoke about drugs for about two minutes at the start and she explained it. She said, look, you've got so much of these heavy emotions down here that you've escaped from and not dealt with throughout your entire life that you're seeking drugs to block those out. Wow. Yeah, so whenever you stop, they'll come back to the surface. When you stop, they'll come back to the surface and you can never win that battle. And I was at a point where I just used so many drugs, they were barely even suppressing them anymore. Like it wasn't, mm. uh, a drug addict knows that. It's like you're not even taking drugs to get high anymore. You're taking them just to not feel the crippling come down that comes uh, after it. So it's like a really a no-win situation. We then jumped into uh, my traumas that I didn't know that I had. <laughs> wow. yeah. so we, we found out that the, the two big things we worked on that day which really just lightened the load for me so tremendously were two beliefs that i have our, our whole world is made up of what we believe we filter our reality through our belief systems we all have our own individual set of beliefs that's what makes us a little bit different when two people argue it's not two people arguing it's just a, a um a challenging of belief systems that's arguing with each other mm. yeah i mean but, but People have wars over their belief systems, right? And all, all belief systems are false, which we can get into that, right? <laughs> Breaking that down. But at this point, I basically, after chatting to Melissa, found out that I had a belief that I couldn't be vulnerable, like I mentioned, which meant I just couldn't let my walls down for anyone. Like I hadn't cried for 10 years, possibly 15 before this point. I was about 30 then. And I just hadn't cried. Like just, I didn't realize that was extremely unhealthy to yeah. let, 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 not let yourself cry. Because that whole cultural thing, like boys don't cry. Yeah, very mentally ill boys don't cry. Yes. Um, I had a belief that I can't be vulnerable. I also had a belief that not only didn't I love myself, I hated myself. Mm. Like I genuinely hated who I was as a person and not just because from when I was a drug addict, but from years before as well. Um, my ego would tell me like I was into affirmations and stuff. Like I love myself. I'm awesome. All that kind of stuff. My subconscious programming was a deep seated hatred for who I was as a person. Um, that's quite confronting to find out. But then Melissa said to me, look, that's what we get to work on. So we jumped back into when these belief systems started. Every belief that we have about ourselves starts in a single event, a very, uh, an event with a very strong, heavy emotion attached happens and we create the belief system in order for us to try and cope with the rest of our life after that because we don't want to feel the heaviness of that emotion quite to the same degree again now the funny thing is we do it as a protection mechanism in the moment but it creates so much heartache later in life because you know like I said, if I have a belief that I can't be vulnerable, it might protect me in that moment, but then moving forward, it becomes super destructive because now I haven't had an outlet for decades after that. And same with the uh, not loving myself. So we jumped back into a couple of memories where I, where I created those beliefs, um, things that I remember the two events, one when I was four, the other one when I was around that age as well. One memory was one I did know about consciously because myself and my family would joke about it all the time. Like it was quite a funny event when it happened, um, which I'll get into in a minute. The other one was something that I hadn't even thought of in decades that was sort of stuck in that subconscious and controlling a lot of my life. But yeah, one of them was when I was four, my brother's uh, 14 years older than me, right? Um, so he was 18 and he fucking amazing. I, I, he was like my hero like i was look, my brother was everything because he would like kick the footy with me play cricket with me when and looking back on it i'm like how much fun is that for an 18 year old to play with a four-year-old like but i was having the time of my life right so anyway he's 18 he brings home uh the new girlfriend to meet the family right and this is now his wife and they've got kids who are like 21 and 23 wow. um so he brings her home and he's met my mum and dad and everything but i hid under the coffee table and I, I would not talk to her, right? I just, I just hid under the coffee table. And we, it, it became just this big joke because we're like, me and Donna, we're such good friends now. And we always joke under the coffee table. And yeah. you know, it comes up from time to time. So I always had it like consciously that it was just this kind of funny thing that happened. But um, we went back into that event and it was uh, very, very traumatic for me, mm. right? Because I saw her as this is the person that's going to take my brother away. And my mm. brother was my whole world. And she wow. was the one who was going to take him away. And so we had to do some work where I had to actually sit with and process that emotion that was stuck all those years prior. And we also did some work, what we call inner child work. And I actually went down and spoke to that four-year-old and helped him understand uh, what's going on, yeah? Because all this, all this trauma work is you have to deal with the energy, the emotion, right? Which is the most important. You have to actually be with it 100% because the emotion's stuck. Yeah. And then we have to, once that's dealt with, we can start to actually reframe the experience because we can't reframe the experience without dealing with the emotion because mm. the emotion's so strong. It, it, like we think we're rational, critical thinking, 
human beings, we're run by our emotions, like so, so completely run by our emotions. So that's why if you go back and start to talk about it or just reframe an experience, it's like that conscious mind's going, okay, I get it, I'm moving that way. But the subconscious and emotional body is moving that way. And whenever you're in dissonance and pulling in both ways, that subconscious and that emotional body will win that win that battle every single time yeah that's why we're like when people say i shouldn't be feeling like this or someone said that and i shouldn't be feeling that way she never said that you are feeling that way and there's a reason for it <laughs> yeah 